Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leet Code called number of one bits. It's an easy, we're going to jump right into it. Write a function that takes the binary representation of an unsigned integer and returns the number of one bits it has. This is also known as the Hamming weight. And we have some notes here specifically for Java that there's going to be no implementation difference, whether it's a signed or unsigned integer. Um, but this is not going to affect us, so we're going to skip over this. We have example one over here. We have three ones, so that is what we output. And example two, just the one one. So our output is going to be one. And example three, everything is a one except for one digit. And we know we're given a 32 bit integer, so we're going to output 31. Okay, so we are given an input to n, and we want to return how many one bits are in n. Now, there are a couple of ways to approach this problem, but we're going to be sticking to binary operations just to get more practice with that. So I have an input n, say it is 1011. I want to see how many ones I have. Now, I can't loop through like I would in a string and check every index, but I have a number. So instead, what I would do is go through and at each digit, see if I have a one or a zero. And if it's one, I would add this to a running total sum. Now, how do I check each digit if it's a one or a zero? One thing I could do is I could mod my n by two. So this is going to give me the remainder I would get by dividing this by two. If it ends in a one, I would get a one. If it ends in a zero, I would get a zero. But this is a binary number. So let's use binary operations to do that instead. How can I get a single digits value if it's a zero or a one? What I'm going to do is I'm going to and my n with the number one. What does this output? One and zero here would give me zero. Zero and zero here is zero. One and zero is zero. And one and one is one. If this was a zero up here, zero ended with one would give me zero. So anding anything with one would give me whatever is in this last digit over here. So now once I get this, I'm going to add this to my total count. So first thing I'm going to do is initialize counts to be zero. And I'm going to loop through my n and I'm going to add to counts what I get from this digit. So n and one. If it's a zero, I will be adding zero. If it's a one, I will be adding a one. Now that I've gotten this last digit, I want to move on to the next digit. So how am I going to do that? Something I can do again using binary operations is called a shift. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right shift this. What that means is I shift this over by one, I move it over. So I just got rid of this one over here and I'm at the next digit. So I would do the same thing again. I would and whatever I have here and add it to my count. And every time I shift it over, I would just keep adding and ending. And in the end, I would actually have an all zero n. So I'm going to keep looping through while n is not zero. So while n is not equal to zero, or if I want to write this more condensed, I can just do while n. I'm going to add to my counts whatever is in that first digit, and then I'm going to shift n. So n is going to equal n shifted over by one. And I can also rewrite this to look like this. And at the end, all I have to do is return counts. So let's go ahead and run this code. Invalid syntax. This should actually be over here. Okay, like that. And then run this code. It's accepted. And now we can go ahead and submit this. And it's accepted as well. So quickly running through our code, let's say we have that same example n is equal to 1011, I believe it was. So we're going to go ahead and loop through this. My count is zero. And while n, so n is non zero, so we are in this while loop, counts plus equals n and 1. So n right now is 1, 0, 1, 1. This ended with 1. We're getting this last digit over here. That's 1. So we're going to add to counts 1. So this goes from 0 to 1. And now we write shift n by 1. So if we had n 1, 0, 1, 1, I would shift it over. So this would get cut off over here. So now it's 0, 1, 0, 1. While n, this is still true. We would get what the last digit is again because we're ending with one. That's one. And we add that to count. So count goes to two and we shift over once more. We're back in this loop. And again, we get this digit here. It's a zero. So we're going to add zero to our count. So it's going to stay two and we shift it over once more. 
So now when we go again, we are at this last original n digit and we would add this value to counts. So this is going to go to three and we right shift again. And now n is all zero. So we would exit this while loop and return counts, which would correctly be three. Now we just solved a number of one bits. There is, however, a faster way to solve this. Now, you probably will not need to know this, but if you are curious, we're going to be applying Brian Kernighan's algorithm. And what that does is it skips over all the zeros. So right now, what are we doing, right? We're going through every single digit and we're checking if it's a one or a zero. If it's a one, we're adding it to counts. If it's a zero, we're also adding it to counts, but not really doing anything, right? So instead, what we're going to do now is we're going to skip through all the non ones and just go to the ones that we see directly. And how are we going to do that? Well, say I had a different example, right? Say my N had a lot more ones and zeros. So instead of checking every single digit, what I'm going to do is just go straight to the ones. And how am I doing this? Well, what is N minus one? So N minus one. What does this equal? That's going to be one zero one zero zero one zero zero zero. Basically, I got rid of this, right? Adding a one to this number over here would give me this number again. So now that I have n minus one, I can see that I have all zeros up until my next one. Well, now let's do n minus one on this number that we've just done. So n minus one, what is this going to give us? One zero one zero 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 one one one. Right. If I were to add a one back to this number, these two digits would be one zero. So my last digit would be a zero. The one would carry. This would be a zero. The one would carry again. Zero one carries again. And we would get our original N that we were looking at. So this was zero one one one. What we did is we've just flipped all the bits. So if I were to and a number with N minus one, I'm getting rid of that one and all the other zeros. So this number over here, let's call this n actually. So let's say this is n. So n minus one would be this number over here. Now anding these together, what do we get? One, zero, one, zero, 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 zero. So we've gotten rid of one and we're just at one, zero, one now. So if we apply the same thing again with this number, what is one, zero, one, one, minus one? So that's gonna be one, zero, zero, one, 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 right? Now, if we were to and this together, we would get one, zero, 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 zero. So now every time what we're doing is we're just getting rid of the least significant one that we see. Whatever our rightmost one is, we're just gonna get rid of it by anding our number with our number minus one. So what would that look like? Instead of doing counts and shifting n, what I'm going to do is do n equals n anded with n minus one. And every time I do this, I'm going to increment my count because every time I perform this, I am just getting rid of my rightmost one. And in the end, all I have to do is return counts. So if I go ahead and run this code, it's accepted. And if I go ahead and submit this, it's accepted as well. Now, before leaving, let's also just run through an example with this, just so we understand how this one is working. So say my N is one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one. What I'm going to do is have counts equal to zero. So while N, this is still true, you know, this is not a non-zero number n equals n anded with n minus one so n minus one is going to be one zero zero one zero 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 this is my current n so this anded with n so i'm going to be ending this with n which is one zero zero one zero zero one this ended together will give me one zero zero one zero 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 and what I'm going to do is increment counts by one because we just got rid of the rightmost one. So this is my new N, right? I assigned this to be my new N. So my new N is going to be this over here. Now I'm back in this while loop and I'm going to do the same thing again. My new N is going to be N anded with N minus one. So N minus one is going to be 
basically just flipping the bit. So this is going to be 0, and everything else is going to be a 1. Now this added together, what does that give me? 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And I increment count again. So now I just got rid of the two ones that I had in n, and this is my new n. So now I am back in this while loop and I do the same thing again. So n ended with n minus 1. So n minus 1 is now going to be 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And anding all of this together is just going to be all zeros, right? They're all opposite bits. So now I have all zeros for my n. And of course, I had to increment counts over here. And once I go in this while loop now, I would actually stop because n is now 0. And I would finally return counts, which is 3. So this is just a cool way to do this. I think it's a super neat trick. Um, you probably will not need to know this, but it is super fun to implement. So we just went ahead and did a number of one bits. If you have any questions with either implementation, of course, as always, let me know down below. If you did like this video, give it a like and subscribe for more content. And as always, I will see you in the next one.